Welcome to SBC Insights with Dr. Bill, simplifying SBC and statistical analysis. This video is going to take a look at the analysis of means and ranges. We experiment sometimes. One treatment better than another, a new raw material making a difference, several ways to look at the data. We're going to look at the analysis of means and the analysis of ranges. And this is a visual technique to determine if the means are the same or not. So this video will focus on the analysis of means and the analysis of ranges. We're going to begin by understanding our data. How did we set up the experiment? What are the treatments that we are going to compare? And then we're going to look at our hypothesis testing. Exactly what are we trying to learn? Finally, we're going to talk about the steps in the analysis of means and then the steps in the analysis of ranges. And then since both of these provide a visual method of seeing if there's a difference, we'll take a look at how it works in the SPC for Excel software and then we'll summarize what we've learned. So we're going to begin by understanding the data. And the data and the methodology, the analysis of range and analysis of means, comes from Dr. Wheeler's book, Analyzing Experimental Data. He shows the data that we're going to use, as well as the details of how you do the calculations. So understanding the data, we're going to start. We have four parts that are going to be coded using five different treatments. The parts are in rows, so part one is the first row, part two the second, part three the third, and part four the fourth. And then we're going to have five different treatments to compare, and they are in the yellow. So, for example, in treatment number one, the four different parts had the results of 250, 260, 230, and 270, and we calculate the average in ranges as well. They're not the same, of course, because we have normal process variation will cause there to be some differences. So what hypothesis are we looking at? Well, what we're trying to say is, are there any significant difference in the treatment means? The table shows there are differences, but are they significant? So we're testing the hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the means are all equal. Each one has the same uh, average. The null hypothesis is that, the alternate hypothesis is that at least one of the treatment means is different than the others. So that's what we're trying to find out. Are there any significant differences? So what are the steps to start in the analysis of means? We'll do the analysis of range in a minute. Well, you collect the data and you run the experiments, which we've done. Then you calculate the subgroup averages and range for each subgroup. Calculate the overall average and average range. Then you plot the subgroup averages and overall average. You calculate the detection limits. And this is given by the overall average plus or minus a scaling factor times the average range. You plot those and you interpret the analysis of means chart. This is very similar to control charts. The only difference is detection limits are used in place of control limits. But these are the steps in the analysis of means. So let's see how the calculations actually work. So you have to have the scaling factor. And that scaling factor is, you can get from the SPC Knowledge Base article, Analysis of Means and Ranges. And what does that alpha represent? It's one, five, or 10%. It represents how sensitive the analysis is. The larger the alpha, the more sensitive the analysis is, but also the more likely it is to give a false signal. So let's show you how our calculations work here. You have five subgroups, each with a subgroup size of four. So each treatment has four underneath it. And we've calculated the average and the range. With the alpha equal to 10%, the scaling factor is 0 0.54. Our overall average, 276.5. Our average range is 56. So the detection limits are that overall average plus or minus the scaling factor times the average range. So they go from 306 to down to 246. So you plot your data, plot your average, plot your detection limits. And you see in this case, there are three treatments beyond the detection limits. Treatment 2, treatment 3, and treatment 4. That means these are significantly different coding weight averages. Now let's suppose we reduce our scaling factor to 1% instead of 10%. Remember, we said it controls how sensitive the chart is. So with a 1% alpha, the scaling factor is 0.797, and you get a little wider detection limits. And what do you get in this case? You get all of them are within the detection limits. So there's no difference in the treatment averages if you use an alpha of, of 1% instead of the 10%. So it's best to use an alpha of 10% because it's more sensitive to the signals, but you can get false ones. Now the analysis of ranges is done very similar. You, you analyze the subgroup ranges on this chart. You plot the average and the average range, and there's only an upper detection limit. In this case, it's 11, 111.5. 
and the scaling factor is you're going to use a smaller alpha with the range analysis. Going to use 5%. That gives you a scaling factor of 1.991, and the detection limit is 111. And you can see all the points there are within control. And this brings out the differences in the two charts. With the analysis of means, we're looking for a signal from the experiment. But with the analysis of range, we're trying to see, are there any special causes in the subgroup? So if you have an out-of-control point on the analysis of range, you've got a problem and you need to redo it. There are no treatment ranges in this case beyond the upper detection limit. That means you can trust the results. There are definitely three treatment averages that are different from the overall average on the analysis of means chart. So if you wanted to make it an analysis of means, analysis of ranges in the SPC for Excel software, it's easy to do. Some software today comes with it. The SPC for Excel does. You simply added your, add, put your data into an Excel spreadsheet as shown here. Same data we used. You pick analysis of means from the SPC for Excel toolbar. Put in your scaling factors. We'll use 10 and 5%. And there you get your charts, your visual picture. And it's easy to see on the analysis of means chart that you have three out of control points, things that are beyond the detection limits that you have. We have the upper and lower detection limit here. While the analysis of ranges chart, everything is in control, which means you didn't have any special causes during the experiment and that these results are valid. So when are you going to use the analysis of means and ranges? Use the analysis of means to determine if there's significant difference between the average of different treatments. It provides a visual picture of the differences and whether there are any differences. You're going to use the analysis of range to ensure that the within treatment variation is the same for each treatment. And that means that the results for the range are in control. So summary, what we've done, we've took a look at understanding our data, how we set up the experiment. We took a look at our hypothesis testing, the null hypothesis where the means were all equal. Looked at the analysis of means, we had three that were different. Analysis of ranges, all was in control. And then we took a look at how you used it in the SPC for Excel software. Thank you for coming to watch our video, our SPC Insights with Dr. Bill. Please subscribe to us. You can visit our SPC knowledge base for 220 additional articles, including the one on analysis of means and ranges, or download the SPC software to make your own charts. Once again, thank you for watching the video.